Uh. All right, Coach, good morning. Um, you want to start this and then we'll take questions. All right. Well, starting with uh, the win over Wake, I thought it was a definitive team win. Super proud of uh, the entire group. Um, you know, plus three in turnover margin, uh, the field position battle was a constant back and forth, and we were able to swing that in our favor with some great punts and coverage as the game went on. Our field goal kicker was Chris Dunn was fantastic as as he's been, and you know his three makes and their one miss was a big deal in the game. Um, we had fewer penalties than Wake. That was something I challenged our guys. You know we had six, they had nine, so they were a little bit more self destructive than we were from that standpoint. And some of that is because of crowd noise. You guys really helped us in that game. They had a lot of false start penalties. And I thought we played complimentary football, and you could really see the opposite side of the ball uh, setting up the other side and, and playing off each other and giving the other side a spark when they needed one. And I thought, you know, right before the drive that we scored with the long pass to Keon, that kind of sparked the whole thing. I felt, you know, the um, – the post route to key on we were tired on defense I, you know we'd just been out there for a while and, and consecutive drives and gotten stops but he could sense that we needed something offensively there to kind of help them and in that drive the offense pushes the ball down the field and gets a score and third quarter we had a seven minute and 30 second drive for 15 plays and a touchdown on offense and that was awesome and, and that's kind of the cycle of I call it the cycle of death for the opponent. But, you know, when your offense is staying on the field and the defense is pitching three and outs or getting turnovers, eventually that defense on the other sideline runs out of gas. You know, and that complementary football equation was really well played by our team. You know, the, the four-quarter atten attendance was huge. Really like to thank our students and fans for making it such a special evening. Um, they're loud positive cheering and, and the aligned crowd noise, the way that they were in it when we needed them to be in certain down and distances for our defense was awesome and uh, positively impacts our performance and the mental state you have as a player. And, you know, when, when the fans are, are cheering loudly in a positive fashion for their team, just understand what that does to the psyche of a young person. It's awesome for our team to have that kind of backing. And thank you for that. It matters. Uh, you were there to help us get our 16th win uh, consecutive at home, which ties Coach Holtz's record and, and uh, school history. And uh, you know what my request is going to be to repeat it, you know, to, to be able to be here for the 17th, uh, the, the record, uh, and also to be here for a senior day that as I get into this, you'll understand um, the importance of that and, and the deserving nature of that for this group. And really, all I want, you know, is for us to be the best we can be as a team and, and uh, to be the best we can be as a program, to be the best we can be as a fan base. And, and I felt like that was one of those moments um, Saturday night. That was a special night. You know, the way we played, the way that you cheered, the whole thing. It was awesome. And uh, thank you. And just talking to my team <clears throat> in our team meeting on Sunday, I asked them, you know, to give me their recap of the game. And it was one of the most fun games they've played in. You know, they talked about the energy, the fans, the way that they played for each other as a team. So it was fun to, to you know, kind of be a part of that whole thing. And, and it was one of the most fun games I've coached in. So get ready for one more time at home, you know, and everything that we got as a team will be given, as a staff will be given, and everything as a fan base we're asking for. Um, you know, offensively in the game, we had 13 explosive plays. and. Uh, we were much more explosive in the run game than we have been. That was great to see. We had zero turnovers to their three. Uh, we had zero drops, um, not just in the receiving room, but as an offense. Time of possession, as I mentioned, was big. You know, from a negative standpoint, they made some good plays at the line of scrimmage. There was a little more leakage at times into the backfield. Some of it's just, you know, MJ identifying some pressures and, Miss ID and some blitzes that, you know, knowing where he can go with the ball quicker will help him. It's a great learning experience that way. You know, defensively, the, the three takeaways, three interceptions, and the fourth down stop was big. I thought the goal line stand 
if you go back and watch that, I mean, Isaiah Moore put three plays in a row together on the goal line. It was just phenomenal. A tackle for loss, a tackle for loss, and a sack. It was like not on my watch. You're not getting in this end zone. I mean, it was an unbelievable three set, uh, three play in a row set for Isaiah. He's a stud. You know, the shutout uh, in the first quarter and third quarter on defense, they're a fast start offense. And that was one of the things that we really talked a lot about, you know, not letting them start the game in a rhythm, not letting them start the second half in a rhythm. And that was really good to see our guys do that. We eliminated the run game. And, and when you do that, it changes, you know, the mesh ride, the slow mesh and all that when you're taking that part away. And I thought our D-line just really battled, you know. I mean, there's a lot of guys that played well, but Corey Durden and and, uh, and uh, Davin Van deserve a lot of credit for the way they strained and disrupted uh, up front. You know, I thought all three linebackers were super productive. You know, negatives, um, you know, there's just a couple times at the top of some routes. He gave those receivers a chance to make plays. Some of them were back shoulder plays, and we can get better at defending the ball there. Uh, the two pass interferences, one of them I thought was, you know, a questionable call. The other one was a good call. And, uh, you know, gave up a few third and longs that normally we wouldn't. I think you got to give Sam Hartman some credit on some of that, too. I thought the guy just really hung in there and took some shots and threw some good balls. You know, special teams-wise, Chris Dunn is the best in the country at what he's doing right now. And, and uh, knock on wood, just one kick at a time, keep it going. But he's delivering and doing his thing. It's fun to watch. Super proud of him. You know, I thought the punt coverage um, by our missiles, Keon Lassane, at first tackle, um, was a, a poor hang time punt. And he wins and stacks his guy, and takes a shot, no yards. Daryl Jones continues to be a stud in, in punt coverage. And then the, the pin punt with Caden Newcaster to Thayer Thomas, man, was that a thing of beauty on the one yard line? Great play by Thayer. And just really proud of Caden, you know, coming in that first punt, 55-yard punt, 4-5 hang with pressure in his face and first college punt ever. You know, what a great play by him. And then Julian Gray continues to, you know, provide field position as a kickoff returner. So it was a good game, you know, and, and uh, Wake's a good football team. You know, Clawson and his staff deserve credit. They've really done a good job there. And, and uh I have so much respect for Sam Hartman. I think that kid is a stud. Uh, now on to Boston College, you know, look forward to playing them and, and known Jeff Halfley a long time. A lot of respect for Jeff as a coach. You know, offensively, I know they're going through it a little bit injury-wise. You can see how they've gotten better on the line. I think they've gone from being a really old offensive line to a young offensive line, and those kids have gotten better up front as the years has gone on. Got hard running tailbacks, and I think they have the most explosive uh, receiver in the ACC in Zay Flowers. Uh, he's a guy I really wanted in high school, and we offered him to play offense and defense here. I thought he was a great player, still is a great player. But, you know, he's just an all-around really, really talented guy. And uh, the other receivers in the room were good players, too. Um, as I mentioned, it's the last home game. It's senior day. Opportunity to win a 17 straight and own a record. And, and uh, you know, this group has collectively 336 career receptions, 1,446 tackles, and has put up 698 points. <laughs> They've done a lot. You know, it's 30 guys in the senior day. Some of them are underclassmen who haven't made decisions. So don't read too much into it. There's probably seven or eight guys on there that can come back and won't know until the season's over. Um, so, you know, we'll have to wait that out. But, you know, I like to give those guys this opportunity to be a part of it in case they do decide to, to go pro. And um, so we'll see where that goes. But you'll see a really, really impressive group of guys that have been um, great to coach and phenomenal in, in building this program back to where it was after the tough season we had three years ago or four years ago now. So love these guys like sons and, and want to see them sent out the right way you know and and i know our uh, our fans love the tailgate and i love that about you uh, i am asking that you come in a little earlier because senior day the the uh, send-off happens before the coin toss um i don't know the exact minute mark but we'll put something out on social media annabelle about you know exactly when that'll start so that you guys can be in the stands for them i think that would be meaningful 
uh, and a good tribute to a great group of guys that have put a lot of blood, sweat, tears into this program and into your viewing pleasure at times. So like a little payback for those guys. But you're talking about a bunch of really good guys. Uh, I'm going to miss them a lot. And so we'll send them out the right way. With that, any questions? All right, David. Hey, Coach. This this team has been so resilient this year, and, and you had so many guys come back, you know, for that fifth year, that senior year. You know, how much is that a, a correlating factor? Yeah, I think it does. I mean, it's kind of like – Isaiah's goal line stand, you know, I mean, there's guys that just, <laughs> they're not going to let things go, you know, the wrong way. And I think uh, there's only so much you can do, but, you know, when the plays are there for you to make and you're in that position, you came back for this, you know, I mean, Devin Carter's contact catch on the goal line, uh, great play, you know, some of the plays you see guys straining to make and running over people to get to the football, jumping over people to get to the football. You know, the the speeches, Grant Gibson gave a great speech on the sideline two weeks ago when we were down 21 to three to the offense. I mean, it's just, they're given everything to, to go out the best that they can, you know? And so, yeah, it's as a staff, um, we feel completely driven to give everything we have to them. Aaron. Hey, Dave, I wanted to ask you about MJ. Uh, you talked about him running reps on air behind the guys in preseason while they ran the drills. Um, he's had now a couple games to actually get game reps, and then he's had practice reps. Like, he's been able to stack those one on top of the other. Was there something when you guys looked at the film that, like, this week you said, okay, that was another step forward? I mean, because he obviously got off to a good start against Virginia Tech as far as what he did in that game. Yeah, you know, I think just the way that we had no pre-snap penalties on offense in this game. That was the first time all year. And uh, even though those don't really dictate the outcome of the games, they make it easier to score when you don't have them. I think him just doing a good job with the O-line, communicating. You know, when he was ready to start his cadence, you could see him back there trying to undress the defense with his, you know, claps and fake claps and different things like that, his cadence. And I thought that was another step offensively. Um, throwing the ball on the run in this game. First time we've really done that with them. You saw him throw two deep out routes to Thayer on the run. Those are pretty big throws. So that showed, you know, a little bit more match, uh, maturation right there by him, uh, doing a little bit more than we'd asked him to do before. I thought, you know, finding the running back on a check down instead of just running and getting hit was something that he hasn't shown he can do. You know, he went to the last element of a, a progression right there. And uh, so those would be three things right there for you. Just just to follow up too, like how much of, you know, when you've got a guy that's making gains and looks confident and brings energy, how much too is you're still like, okay, you, you still want to make sure you set him up in the right position to be successful, not just throw, okay, he can do more and more and more and then overload him. Yeah, I think you still got to be careful. I mean, it's still a small sample, uh, Aaron. It's, you know, it's a game and a half and, so, you know, we're excited uh, about what he's doing, but, you know, at the same time, I think setting him up is important, you know? I mean, what does he do best? Where is he most confident? And be honest, it's no different than when you have a three-year starter and you still want to do what the guy feels most confident with. And his volume of offense uh, has grown in the last week and a half, and I'm sure it will continue to with little nuances, you know? Um, because it's still a game of reps. I mean, if, if we put in a new play, it, it might look like a good play on tape, but if he hasn't repped it 20 times, it's not going to be comfortable, you know? And I think that's just because there's so many different looks you can get at quarterback every every time you line up. So, you know, you want to make sure every time you, you drop something in the bucket, it may seem like a single drop, but it fills up over time, you know? And I'd rather run a play, you know, that we can rep multiple, multiple times and let him know the answers and feel confident when something happens that I'm doing this. Uh, you saw on the game right there, we had a play in that we thought was going to be a really good play. And if they zero blitz, his answer would be throw the slant. And he didn't see the blitz come when he got sacked, you know, and that wasn't a breakdown of protection. They brought more than we had to block and you got to know where your hot is, you know, and 
I think if we would have ran that play five more times in practice, that probably wouldn't have happened, you know? So you just got to be careful because there's a lot of good plays that you can run, but do you have the time to rep them enough where all the questions are answered for the quarterback mentally? You know, and I think that's a balancing act that he and Coach Beck have to play, you know, just to be confident that you're getting what you want out of it. Corey. Dave, uh, we saw, obviously, Devin Carter leave the game on Saturday night. Do you have a status update for him, first of all? He's doing good. Yeah, he's much better. So he, he took a pretty hard shot, you know, in the midsection, was having a hard time getting his air back. And so uh, from what I know, again, I haven't had a staff meeting yet today. It's at 3.30. But from yesterday's report, everything was trending the right way. And I also wanted to ask you, it's kind of a loaded question, but when you look at – this senior class and and all the guys that that will potentially walk uh, on Saturday and and everything that they've done throughout this program. I mean, this dates back to you know the 2018 class in some cases. How important have they been for this program to not only get where it is now, but to be able to rebuild compared to what you had in that 2017 and 2018 season too? Yeah, I mean they've been a big part of all of it. You know the. The evolution of our culture, uh, the leadership, the, um, you know, the growth of our staff with the players. I think, you know, this culture that we have now, you know, obviously as a head coach, you lead it, but these guys are the ones that water it every day too. You know, they're the ones that help it grow and, and hold each other accountable. So all these guys that are walking are a part of the success we're having in a major way. And you know, I do look at it like I coach them, but honestly, we grow together. You know, I mean, it's I'm a better coach because I have these guys to work with. And and it's I think it's a really good two way relationship. You know, they, there's a lot of back and forth communication. And I know it's a group that uh, not just me, our staff, these are guys that we're going to be friends with after football for a long time. Like We've been through a lot together. <clears throat> James. Uh, yeah, Dave, we don't know the status yet of Fury Djokovic. Uh, Boston College started a, a redshirt freshman against Duke, had four touchdowns, no interceptions. Just watching him, if he's the guy, I mean, just your thoughts on seeing him in action against Duke. He threw the ball really well uh, in that game. As you mentioned, he had some good pressure on him. He delivered, and it was an impressive performance uh, against a team that's playing really well. So, yeah, I mean, it definitely caught your eye uh, in, in, in some ways. He's sparking them on offense, you know. I mean, that's as good a performance they've had throwing the ball all year. And I just wanted to follow up on your younger guys. Just in general, is it hard to get a really good look at your true freshman early in the season if they're late enrollees or just when you're in fall camp and you've got regulars getting looks? Because it feels like most years you'll see those guys earn reps later in the year as opposed to early on. I think there's a couple things in play. Uh, one of it is, you know, your depth. You know, if you're um, coming into a room that's got four upperclassmen in it, it's going to be harder for you to play in your position regardless, you know. Uh, and then the health factor of your group, you know, maybe it started where you were fifth and now there's three injuries and you're third and you're going to play, you know. So that changes the dynamic too. And then here's what you mentioned, you know, how, how well do they know the system, whether it's the offense or the defense, can they get out there and make the plays? Like Brandon Cleveland's a great example. He was not ready to play early in the year and he's worked hard in the weight room. He's changed his body in a great way and he's learned the defense. And then we had injuries and he was ready, you know, and I thought he did some good things in the weight game. Um, there's some other guys, you know, where I think like Michael Allen, just there's a lot of older guys in the room. You know, and then we've had what we've had, you know, with Demi being in and out <clears throat> to give him some opportunities and he's taken advantage of them. You know, same thing with Terrell Timmons. You know, he didn't know the offense as well, but he was showing up. And then all of a sudden you have an injury to Anthony Smith and now there's need, you know, and, and what can he do? All right, well, let's get him caught up. And now he's caught up and he can play, you know. So I think there's multiple things there. And, you know, you'd love to register to everybody, but. That's not the real, you know, to me, if you want to win every game that you can play, you got to get your best guys out there. And sometimes injury dictates when guys are needed the most. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. Brian. 
Yeah, Dave, <laughs> uh, along those lines, uh, when did you feel like MJ was ready? And, and do you think in hindsight you, you could have pushed him even a little bit earlier? <clears throat> well, we talked about it in training camp. You know, I mean, you knew that uh, the things that MJ does well, he's a good passer, okay? Uh, he he and Jack can run, you know. Um, Jack has a lot of game experience, as you guys know. And, and so really the conversation was is if Devin's out for a quarter or two quarters, then, you know, Jack knows what to do. He can go in and get us out of a game like he saw in the Florida State game. But if we knew it was going to be a long period of time, that MJ may take the job just because he's a better passer. And so uh, we thought that could be how it played out. Um, and that's what you saw happen over time. You know, it wasn't anything that Jack couldn't do, you know, or wasn't doing. It's just what MJ was doing a little better was throwing the ball and, and more accurate with it. Have you been at all surprised with, with anything you've seen from him here in, in, in the last six quarters? I think it's more just, you know, how he carries himself, his poise, his humility, uh, how he treats his teammates, how he talks to the media, like all the things that you don't really can't practice that with guys, you know, like how are you going to respond after a comeback win? Like that's not something I can practice. Like you got to see him do it. And so, you know, actually very proud of, of him for that. Thankful to his parents, you know, because uh, obviously he's the way he is because of their leadership in the home. And just, you know, I think that's the biggest thing for anyone out there that's having success is just to stay grounded and remember where you got to where you're at and why and not get caught up in the hoopla of it. It's hard to do. And so I've been proud of him for that. Aaron. Dave, you did talk about mobility with, with him. Um, you know, it seems like you do have more of a run oriented, a run part of your quarterback with your quarterback right now. Um, compared to maybe with Devin, you know, as far as mobility, something you can call a designed run. How much does that change what you guys are able to do offensively, being able to probe with him a little bit on the ground? Yeah. And some of the runs are him running scrambles, you know. So I think there's there's a little bit more than people understand, you know. Um, but the design piece is completely different, you know, than we had with Devin. There was, there was a few goal line runs we had with Devin. You guys saw those early in the year, and they were successful for him as well. But the, the read part of what we do, you know, RPOs, when you're either handing it or throwing it, we still have that stuff, you know. But now it's – we can also do the – are you throwing a screen or are you throwing a quick route or are you reading an end or a backer and keeping it? Um, so just additional things that help move the offense and, and not too many of them, you know, cause obviously you want to take care of them too. So, you know, I think that's where we got to be smart, you know, is when we need them and when we don't and how to protect him and for him, how to protect himself, but also do what we need to do to win, you know, and I think there's a balance there, um, and we got to be smart with it and MJ's got to be smart with it, you know? But anyone that has that mobile quarterback NFL down, I mean, it's different on defense defending that. You know, you, you can't drop eight in coverage and feel like, hey, we're going to cover them all, and he's just going to stand there. Like, no, he's going to run for 10 yards if you do that. You know, uh, we're going to read your end. And, you know, based on what he does, we're going to have one less defender. You know, so it's 11-on-11 11 11 football um, in more ways than one. And just like we have to deal with that on defense here, you know, now they have to deal with that with our offense. And I do think that's an advantage at times, you know, um, to have that mobility. And just as a, as an offense in general, you know, it's not really installing a lot of new things. It's, you know, if we're running counter to the tailback and then we run counter to the quarterback, it's nothing different for anyone but one person. So you're not, you know, the old line doesn't know who's got the ball, right? So, you know, you can – motion your tail back out you can use them as a blocker whatever and, and plus one in the running game or, or get them to minus one in the box all those things so the volume of your offense on a play calling sheet might increase but from a knowledge standpoint for your guys it doesn't change and that's the thing that's nice you know as you look at how they're defending you do we have any other questions for coach yeah, actually, I got one more. Um, Dave, a big picture question. I was curious when 
you saw the Clemson score against Notre Dame. Um, you know, the league, that seems like it would put the league in potentially some uphill climb of making the playoff, but yet it also comes at a time when I would say the ACC seems to be better regarded than it has been. You guys have been a fixture in the poll, North Carolina, uh, Wake and Syracuse. Kind of how do you reconcile that, that the ACC might be on the outside looking in on the playoff, but yet there's still a fair amount of ranked teams and quality that we've seen this year? Yeah, I mean, I think almost every year one lost team makes it to the to the finals. You know, it seems like um, Clemson is still a one lost team, you know, and we'll just have to see how it plays out. I think these next four weeks are going to be huge in college football. I mean, this, this weekend was pretty crazy with what happened to several teams, you know, and the injury piece of it all. I know Oklahoma State went from being undefeated to losing two in a row because they lost both their quarterbacks, you know. So, I, you know, you have to do that. It's your job. Aaron, I understand, like, figure out who's going to win the national championship in week eight. But I think there's just a lot of football left, and I don't think the ACC is out of it yet. I don't. I think there's a lot that can happen, and – you know, if any of these undefeated teams have the same type of situation that we've had or Oklahoma State has and they're trying to figure it out without their starter, then their season could change. And now all of a sudden a one-loss team moves up again. So, you know, there's a lot of football still to be played. James. Yeah, David, we don't talk a lot about the O-line play just individually. Um, looking at the PFF grades, I think Grant and Chandler are among the best in their position in the ACC. Can you just evaluate what you've seen from those two guys? I know they'll both be uh, walking this weekend. Yeah, no, they're both playing really good for us, James. Uh, you know, Grant Gibson's playing the best football he's played. I'm super happy for him. He's playing aggressive. Uh, a lot of finished blocks, pancakes. Um playing fast, having fun, you know, it's been fun to see Chandler out there and we're different when he's in. He's definitely a, a strong, strong guy on the left side there and he's having fun, you know, his smile is contagious, just a really, really good guy. And uh, it's nice having that, you know, you've heard me say this many times, I think you build a football team inside out, you know, and when you have a good center and, you have a good nose guard, that's a good start for both sides of the ball, you know, and, and then you work out to the next spot. And Chandler and, and uh, Gibby are playing at a high level. I mean, Tim McKay is playing at a high level, uh, very physical right now. And it's been good for us to get Spees back, you know. I mean, he, he played the first half of the season with a sore groin, and to have him healthy has been a great thing, you know, to get him going. The O-line played one of their better games. Um Really, the last two games, I think they've played really good football for us and been playing against some good fronts. So it's good to see. Anybody have anything else? All right, Coach. All right. Everybody, thank you. Thank you, guys.